It's been a long day. Let's get this thing over with. Oh, hey, I didn't see you come in there. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another video, and, uh, yeah. As you might have noticed, we're about to do the follow up to uh, the Ace Volume 1, which, we're, which today we're going to review for as far as I could. Uh, at the best of my abilities at the moment, because it's uh, getting late and I need to work tomorrow. The Ace Volume 2 by Etienne Acevedo. So, uh, yeah. Without further ado. This basically is where uh, Volume 1 uh, left off. So, uh, we're going to. Uh, since I'm trying to do a different uh, kind of format a little bit, something different. Yes, this is my house. No, mom and, mom and daddy are not paying for it. So, uh, yeah. I I pay my own rent here, so. Uh, this, is my, this is where I live. And uh, yeah, I've, I've done the chores as well, so don't worry about that. I know to run a, a single household. I've been running it for almost a year or more. So uh, yeah. Without further ado, we're going to do the... We're going to... I had to split this video in uh, like eight parts. All of, the, all of them uh, will contain uh, yeah, certain elements. We start with uh, number one. Got my notes ready. Once again, Ryder, and uh, yeah, the team behind it, the synopsis, the breakdown, the strip part three, four is positives, five is negatives, and uh, six, the final verdict slash score, plus score, so get the score as well. And uh, seven is, is going to be the what's next, I have a little surprise in store for you guys. I think a particular creator might enjoy it as well. First, I need to get something out of my uh, on my special uh, suitcase. After that, uh, we'll finish the video. One sec. Oh, we can find it. If not, we can always find it later. No rush. I think I found it. We're not uh, peeking this time. So, uh, yeah. Save that one for later, but uh, yeah. First, uh, yeah, the order is brighter with the team, etc. This part two is a synopsis. Three, we do a quick breakdown of uh, what happened in uh, volume one and how it's uh, affecting uh, volume two. The positives, negatives, the final verdict, score, the what's next, and uh, what I grabbed over there was part of my uh, shameless uh, e bagging uh, attempt that will follow in part eight, and that's where it ends. So we're going to start with uh, part one. It is uh, the Ace Volume Two is written by Edwin Acevedo, just like Volume One. Artist Iwai Canales. There's been a little uh, change in uh, in uh, the in the team for for this uh, book. So uh, yeah, the the colorist and writer uh, the colorist has stayed the same, but this time. Uh, Ibai Canales is uh, doing the art. The letters are done by SK. The cover art is, is done by uh, Bat Maxton. I hope I spell his name correctly. Epilogue is... Uh, so the part 2 of the epilogue is uh, done once again at Acevedo. The art by uh, Sweens, I think. 
and letters S K. And the origin story of uh, Akula, which will uh, be later in this book, is done by uh, by Edwin Acevedo. The art by Alan Alonso, and the uh, letters once again S K. So right now we're going. Uh, here's the this the cover of the first one of the second volume, and uh, yeah, here are the names, so you can read for yourself. I'll leave them up two seconds. And of course, uh, yeah, the ace uh, is created by Edwin Acevedo and Swings, and uh, yeah, the copyright belongs to the rightful owners, and uh, yeah, I'm not in to make money of it or, or anything. I'm doing this because uh, it's something I like to do when I'm when I'm off the job. So, uh, but let's go to the synopsis now. David Diaz slash the ace plus. Uh, we come back to it later. It's targeted by the adopted celestial, which apparently fell in place this time. But uh, yeah, it was kind of. I didn't know if it was an. Uh, if it was an. Uh, was if she was a hero corrupt or anti heroine, etc. But uh, basically, the orphan is uh, attacking the uh, ace at the moment because he wants to rip the armor off his body. <laughs> she, at least. So uh, right now we're going to the breakdown. This takes place. This is kind of a, yeah, an intro for uh, yeah. It introduces uh, the God, the God Lads, a space and a uh, kind of an alien space force similar to the Green Lantern Corps, almost too similar. Whoops. And uh, yeah, they're uh, they're uh, finding signal signals for uh, yeah. Wait a minute, something is about to fall here, and not something I want to f let fall. There we go. And uh, yeah. They're basically uh, making their way to Earth, and uh, Akula beat them uh, to the beat them. Yeah, beat the bounty hunter, the shark, the Sharknado. Basically, yeah, uh, got there first before them, and uh, yeah, Jank uh, is is uh, yeah. Still, it's time. Yeah, they're about to get into a battle, and uh, yeah, and one of them. Uh, Basically, uh, Gilderwalk Light and uh, Sinestro Light tell him that uh, they don't want to get their hands on him. But uh, and the alien girl is on with a nice rack this time. Yeah, it's good. It's good. The target. They're basically they're the only reason why they're here is because to get Akula back uh, to where. Yeah, to come back with them, to take him into custody. And uh, once they reach Earth, they split out. And yeah, the, this person, or at least uh, the mo the ki the Kilowog uh, Light, is uh, called uh, Breck. And Breck is kind of that uh, tough guy, that uh, drill sergeant type, like Sergeant Ernie or Deegan. And this uh, Kilowog has a similar uh, has similar attitude, and uh, Breck as well. Safer, and uh, one tells him to uh, targets up ahead. So yeah, this page one, page two, page three. The guy meet uh, David Diaz, aka the Ace, who asks him what the hell they're doing over here, why they came to Earth, and uh, Akula, yeah. Lesson you should learn in uh, combat is this is almost too obvious, and especially with predators like sh like shark or a big feline, never turn your back on your enemy, and uh, Akula crunches him. Uh, Bites in his arm, rips to his armor with his giant uh, t teeth. He could replace him easily, but uh, the one where Sinestro Light, as, as I, I like to call him, shoots him uh, with a stun uh, blast, and uh, yeah, it tells him that uh, yeah. This for the next page, and uh, Breck uh, basically knocks him out with his th with his uh, gun. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of tea first. Mint with eucalyptus. No lemon this time. I'll say it in the morning, in the afternoon. And uh, Breck uh, comes to uh, David and tells him that uh, yeah, he's the bearer of the sacred armor, but uh, he tells him yeah, kind of uh, yeah, dance a bit that is not worth it. And uh, David Diaz is kind of uh, yeah, 
That's uh, his own cocky attitude. Last time I didn't check, ask for your opinion. Actually, <laughs> which is funny. But uh, here comes uh, this. Almost remind this. I don't know why, but this guy reminds me a little too much of Sinestro at times. Send down Bragg, the attitude, etc. And yeah, of course, there's a question, but uh, they're not yet. He ma tries to make clear. And they introduce themselves to Galas as as an alien species slash special force slash uh, yeah space for space uh, police corps. They tell them that uh, yeah, the Universal Emperor sent them to uh, the home planet. Sent them to get them back to his home, to their home planet Roth. And uh, yeah, David d of course David doesn't know where it is, or David. And he tells him there's a lot of them to take in, but uh, yeah, Ma like he's like you've seen in the first one, like Akula kind of uh, told him. He was only the first. They're more hunting for uh, yeah, the ace for the alien technology. In this case, his arm. And he tells him to trust his sacred arms instead and to come with them. And uh, yeah, Dav Diaz uh, eventually agrees to come with them. It's okay, I take a moment. Yeah, they have to go now. And uh, he tells Jank to start uh, to get the gas on board and start the engine. And uh, yeah, Bragg basically uh, handcuffs uh, Akula and uh, takes him into custody. And he tells him that he's finally going to pay for everything he has done. There will be plot twists at the end of his origin story that we'll come back to later. And uh, puts him in hand some kind of handcuffs. And yeah, of course David Diaz who has never been in a spaceship before thinks, uh, wow, I'm not c I'm, he's going to travel on a ship to, to another planet, to another Earth. And uh, this is the part where I would, uh, put, uh, Walter M I would have put uh, Walter Monsanto's uh, another Earth on from his uh, album Perfect Balance, but uh, I don't want to get into copyright problems with uh, Mythical Science rec Records, so uh, his life is nuts, and uh, Akula is secured. Once they're in the spaceship, traveling to uh, the planet, let's see what it's called again, to the planet of uh, yeah, Roth, to take him to Roth for uh, yeah, the stand trail. And uh, yeah, the, the female pilot asks him uh, yeah, what the hell is wrong. But he, but yeah, David feels bad for saying, saying for not saying goodbye to his mom. So uh, she gives him, uh, yeah. Well, this could be, uh, could at least make him look like he gives gives more motion in it that he throws him. But whatever, I can. Uh, yeah, she tells him that he could help him with that, and she gives him a piece of technology that's an, uh, it's a mess a messenger that could capture a message and deliver it straight to his uh, to a friend or ally or whatever to make sure uh, yeah it's kind of a holocron slash flying uh, holocron that tells it that could send a message to uh, yeah wherever you no ma wherever in the universe so uh, yeah David Diaz tells him that uh, tells her that her mom th is a mom that he loves her and uh, yeah he tells that she says looking for answers for the armor and uh, yeah the girl tells, or the female pie tells him that uh, that you only have to tell him where to go, and uh, it all delivered the exact coordinates. And uh, yeah, the basically tells him that the message it could basically travel to wherever, in the, to almost every everywhere in the galaxy, and uh, eventually it will find her without a doubt. And uh, yeah, Akula, and Akula is uh, yeah. Is not amused, and he tells uh, the leader of the of the crew, Sinestro Light, tells him that the course plotted to set course to the, to the next wormhole. But uh, here comes the cavalry, and uh, yeah, here comes the celestial. This god, the celestial is called the uh, angel like, angel like, who uh, flies towards uh, the sh their ship. And and crashes down the party. And yeah, Jenk uh, figured out that uh, the raider picked up an uh, an evil celestial, and uh, she she's here for the sacred armor. Give and uh, yeah, she tells him to give it to him and make the deaths so that 
and uh, she'll make their deaths quick. It's an act of mercy. And before he tells uh, Jenk to uh, bring up the front shields, side shields, and uh, he gets stabbed through his chest, stabbed through his uh, back and chest by Angela. And uh, yeah, the leader Sinesso Light tells him that uh, the celestial that uh, she'll pay for it, and he f f shoots his lasers at her. At her but uh, Angela uses her uh, wings as a shield. To deflect, to deflect, to basically uh, deflect the blast, and she tells him that she he will die slowly then. And uh, Breck uh, comes with the heavy, with the heavy, uh, with the heavy weaponry to uh, shoot her down, but uh, she blocks him like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, she goes if, and she shoots uh, the bracelet. This looks like Wonder Woman, why didn't I notice first? Wow. There were too many similarities here. Blam, blam, blam. And uh, yeah, she sh he shoots her, but uh, yeah. The lady uh, throws uh, some uh, plasma grenades. And uh, yeah, but uh, she, she use, once again, she uses her wings as a, shield, as a shield, it doesn't affect her at all. And uh, yeah, the ace takes him to safety. And uh, she tells him that he ripped, ripped, he ripped him off for peace for sending in her way of the, getting the armor. And uh, if one uh, slice of her wings, Breck dies. Oh my god, they killed Breck, you bastards. And uh, yeah, she likes the, the sacred armor. It's cool. And yeah, it tells him that he uh, tries to uh, tell him so to yeah put his act together. And uh, yeah, she admits that it shows the bear well. And yeah, it, uh, yeah, he always beef with Akula. He thinks he can with uh, after dealing with Akula that he could deal with a celestial, but uh, it's not so easy as it looks. And looks could be really deceiving. I can't use a zoom in. Otherwise, I would have made a point, but uh, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she uh, Angel Angel like uh, kind of uh, hits on him, and yeah, powerful warriors like you would make a perfect sire for of children. I wonder if celestials um, how they pick their mates. Do they abduct them or something? I don't know. So you have a lot of nerve celestial. You declared war by attacking us today, but uh, yeah. She uses her magic to, uh, yeah, basically uh, impel with different kind of, yeah, rubble. And uh, yeah, also leader and Raiko, that's the name of the leader, dies. Another one dies before I even start to know him. And the David thinks he's crazy, and uh, he goes on the attack against a full train celestial. And uh, yeah. She kicks him. It's a little fight scene, but uh, yeah, man, I hate it when they talk. That I hate it when they talk in their fight scene. This, yeah, something with American comics, but and other things. But yeah, I'm too used to. Uh, I, I prefer. F this is nothing against Edwin, but I prefer the fight scenes without uh, too much dialogue. This was this was not even necessary. We already know she's powerful. We don't need to have another uh, another confirmation. So uh, yeah, she uh, she anticipates all his attacks, and uh, yeah, you must yeah in battle you always need to, and especially with martial arts, you need to have technique as well as power, and uh, yeah. But uh, she lets the guard down, and uh, David activates uh, the the front armor and blasts her, similar to. Uh, what Iron Man did in the previous in the previous issue, in the previous it's basically like Iron Man when his uh, suit is overcharged and needs to get uh, the leftover energy out of the system, so uh, to prevent from overloading, and uh, he shoots him, shoots him through his uh, chest plate, and uh, basically tells and pla basically yeah, shoots him, and uh, deals enough damage to uh, knock her out. 
turn our head sideways and uh, this one this kind of things that I found a few things I like about this is for equal uh, opportunity between the sexes so uh, yeah she's knocked out he never hit a woman before but he could justify it this time and I agree but yeah it actually and he's what it actually worked yeah, she, the the female pilot tells uh, praise for uh, Jank. Raiko, uh, so Jank is the pilot. Raiko, the leader, Sineso Light, and uh, Breck, Gilwalk Light, to the other world. They have to apologize, but uh, yeah, the girl tells him that yeah. This would be a, she never thought this would be her be her fate, of course. Blah blah. And she, tell, and she checks on uh, if the chip is damaged, so uh, yeah. And he, uh, David puts uh, the handcuffs on her uh, legs and uh, arms to make sure that she doesn't fly away. One of the engines got damaged during the uh, attack, but uh, one of the backup engines has uh, kicked in and the uh, front shield is holding up, so that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, she uh, takes out a wormhole and Jenks was uh, able to put the ship in autopilot and uh, lead it uh, over there and that's uh, to be continued that's the end of volume 2 right next we're going to uh, yeah the epilogue part 2 where uh, seems to be the ace swung to what seemed to be a snowy uh, landscape ice plant or something similar to a hut some kind of a monstrous uh, creature with uh, a combination of a goat and something else I don't know what this is. He knocks him out, etc. Like a yeti, a demon or something. And he uh, walks, he continues to walk inside the cave to what seems to be uh, some, kind of, uh, some kind of portal to uh, the home of uh, the Celestials. This is telling the trespassers are not welcome. And, uh, but, uh, Apparently this one uh, is not a trespasser and she didn't recognize him, but who, who is this? This tells him to welcome home. And basically nothing happens here. So now we're going to uh, the origin story of Akula. And the comedias. And uh, where, the, where the club is having a meeting, the Brotherhood is having a meeting, and uh, it's it was time to welcome uh, Akula to the Brotherhood brothers and uh, yeah page dues and uh, they're all uh, shouting his name but uh, Akula slashes his, his throat and uh, yeah it was basically a distraction for him to kill his uh, the leader of the gang all well, appeared a long time ago and I'm not seeing any how it happened Killed his he apparently killed his father and took over his club and he waited a long time to get revenge and he said considers blood, blood paid, debt paid origin story yeah but and he shoots him uh, straight to the head with his, his uh, shotgun and the name of the leader was Kalina and yeah they'll come after him and uh, Akula shoots them all dead with his lasers and tells him I'm sorry brothers and he rides away in a in a lobo style in lobo style fashion and that was his origin. Here's a little fan art contest winner, Yaro, Yaro draws with the ace and Akula himself. But what's interesting here is Akula is not maybe a maybe a villain. But he did did he did for right cause to avenge his more or less right cause to avenge his uh, father. Yeah, here's the volume the the uh, well, fan art winner and uh, with this that's the end of the breakdown so let's go uh, all the way to uh, the first part there we go how to say is the positives ones f part four the positives the cover art looks good and there's a little bit better you see who the you see a little bit who they are who the persons are people are in I know who this is at all. Was it the other lady? I don't even know. But good cover art, but this one is not showing up either. And yeah, it's a better match with the interiors as well. 
the interior is once again okay better balance and it arrived within a year and yeah this is pdf file so uh, i didn't have to pay for shipping twice which is a good thing went straight into the action this time which is a good thing there are elements of uh, green lantern hawk girl and iron man and akula's origin went straight to the point similar to the lobo unfortunately those are good things and bad things the negative basically the good bad and the ugly the negatives are could have been a better match with the interiors and yeah this character i don't even know who this is or when it will show up i don't even know who that is is that the lady or is it someone else i know this is angel like but that's it and another point is these are the godlas if i spell the name correctly i mean they're you see them on stickers etc but I said with uh, yeah when uh, Breck died. So, oh my God, they killed Breck! You bastards! Uh, I, I barely know who these people are. I don't even know who the, the name of the lady is. I don't only know these three, but they get killed off by Angel Angel like before I even get the chance to know them, what their background is, etc. If it's and then. I, I don't feel anything for their deaths. Nothing. And yeah, this hitting this uh, yeah. It I recognize the same pro same problem that I had with uh, yeah, Graveyard Shift Volume Four by John Malin. It, it I they get killed off before I get a chance to know them. Yeah, it, yeah I don't feel anything about their deaths. Just okay, they die I guess. That's it. Not big characters. Okay. They're. They're kind of marked alike, they are a big thing with stickers and everything, but then you kill off 90% uh, of the squad. It's not, it's beyond me. But, uh, yeah. And, yeah. The hit, the hitting of Angel, like, I know she's evil, but it feels kind of off. It feels off. It feels kind of, yeah. Ah, no. Try to set them some amount of tension, but it kind of feels you know, like this. The apple in the epilogue, basically, yeah. There's one fight. There's one quick fight scene, and yeah, he goes into the portal to visit the Celestials, and yeah, I still don't know who this person is. Is it is it David Diaz? Is it someone else? I I don't even know this guy. I don't know how how is this one who turns into Celestials. I don't get it either. But uh, yeah. I don't, even, I don't even know who the white haired lady is. I still don't know her name. And uh, yeah. It feels kind of. The second volume feels kind of. The first one was okay, but the second one feels kind of rushed in certain areas. I don't know why. I mean, it feels like. It feels like I'm. This is kind of a. Yeah, Ultimate story, but this feels kind of kind of like I'm going to a fancy restaurant from Argentina, an Argenti Argentine steak, an, Ar an Argentinian steakhouse or something. I order a few dishes. The entree is a few empanadas with uh, some vegetables or cheese or beef. The main dish is an uh, yeah. It's a good, uh, yeah, 200 grams steak. Me, uh, I, and I prefer me, I prefer medium to medium well. I pick medium this time. And uh, as a dessert, I order uh, let's let's say uh, some, uh, yeah, some tiramisu. It's not an, it's not an Argentine dish, but uh, so be it. Or some. Uh, I would say that uh, mate as a drink. And uh, yeah, the steak arrives, uh, yeah, well done or overcooked or undercooked, at least undercooked in this time, in this case. But uh, the vegetables, etc., side dishes, the, the papa criolla. That's, that's Colombian, by the way. That's, that's an example. The 
potato and the, the roasted mushrooms, they arrive there perfectly, etc. But in this case, yeah, and the mate is delicious. But volume two should be the steak. That should be the that should be the 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 star of the of the meal. And uh, I don't. But I could. But the only thing good thing out of it is that the origin story of Akula. Even though it's rushed, it's straight to the point. But slight, it is slightly superior to the rest. I mean, the steak is undercooked. Side dishes are okay. The art is okay. But yeah, the mate is delicious. But this Akula's Aku background story is, this should be the hero of the, I said, volume 2 should be the hero of the of this book. And I, I don't see it. I don't feel anything about any of this. Of them. It feels, it has a lot of good ideas, but it's rushed in terms of writing. And it could have been, it feels like a brainstorm session. And some of the characters are way too familiar to uh, people I know. I mean, it's basically the Green Lantern Corps. Sinestro, the guy in the middle is Sinestro. This one is, uh, yeah, I know it's pilot. This could be uh, the, the daughter of, uh, yeah, Alan Scott. The original Green Lantern, the scale walk, etc. This could be Martian Manhunter as well, looking at the face, but uh, yeah. yeah. Some things are way too. F yeah, in terms of writing, it feels rushed in certain areas, and yeah, basically, Akula is the only good thing. Because I didn't, yeah. It started out on a good promise, but it kind of fell flat here. And here we go to the final verdict is, uh, yeah. Like I said, Volume 1 started good, but Volume 2 wastes a lot of potential. It, it felt rushed in certain places. I mean, nothing happens in the epilogue. And side dish, Aku or uh, dessert, Akula's origin is better than the entire meal. When this Volume 2 should have been the hero. The main ingredient, should, this, his, this should be the hero of the dish, and I don't see it. All I feel is disappointing. It's just disappointing. And sometimes kind of, and kind of soon as you already know the god last well, I don't even know who this lady is. And then 90% gets killed before I even start to know them. Without getting proper intuition where they came from, etc. It's a comic I get, but still. And yeah, Angela like, is basically an evil hawk girl. Beck is a uh, evil hawk girl in the current formation, corrupted, I don't know. Kill Beck or Breck is Killerwalk. He dies immediately. Jenk, the pilot, dies. Raiko, the Sinestro Light, dies, and Akula Shark is basically the, the anti-Lobo. Uh, but yeah, at least uh, I don't care about the deaths. Um, I'm ask asking myself, why should I care about them if I don't barely know them? So yeah, we're going to the final score. This uh, actually a disappointment, man. I mean, there's some excellent art, there's some excellent artwork in it, and uh, some interesting ideas but they should have been worked out more so my final score is yeah sorry Edwin this this is nothing personal against you but I cannot give it higher than a 55 out of, five out of 100 so 5.5 out of 100 it's not entirely terrible terrible if you buy for the art you're basically in the safe zone before from two should have been the hero of the dish of the three stories and Akula was the only good part the mate was the only good drink of the, of the entire thing. And it felt rushed and felt flat in a similar fashion to Graveyard Shift Volume 3 and 4. I, I think 4 was, 3 was at least readable. 4 is, yeah. I experienced the same, pr I recognized the same pattern, the same problems. How it fell, fell flat in Graveyard Shift Volume 4. Goes over the center of the madness. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. And yeah. I recognize the same problem again. There's a bit of a lot of CG books, etc. I know what it is. And yeah, in terms of writing, I think Edwin, it could have been be worked better if he, if they hired an editor on the team. Maybe someone from outside the CG circle, someone they, with a different, or some proofreaders with an outside perspective, who might not share your opinion 100% but 
to provide you with valuable insight. It is not entirely terrible, but yeah, it's good art and some artistic skills, a nice cover, etc. It doesn't. I'm speaking from a writer, from a uh, perspective, from a reader perspective, from outside of my own cir outside of my own circles. Let's see if things will work. Yeah, it's worked. Outside from outside from their circles, I'm looking at it, and uh, yeah, I recognize the same problem over and over again. And yeah, I have to cross Edwin Acevedo. I know he released another comic on f f go fund me on the fund my comic. My bad. About some Vikings who strand on an island, which is a good concept, but my uh, yeah. In my previous video, I said I, I think I already know what to expect, and this is this is what I was what I was afraid of would happen. What would happen, and yeah. Did this convince me to buy volume 3? Uh, I have to drink my tea first. <sighs> no! So, Edwin is off my uh, list of, of yeah, crowdfunders to back. This was not ready in its current form at all. Especially the epilogue and uh, yeah, this part. It could have worked out a little better. So it's not entirely terrible, but yeah. It could have been better if there was an editor on the team or some proofreaders that uh, could have provided some valuable insight, and that's something that they have problem accepting at times. So no, I'm not buying the third volume if it ever comes out, nor uh, the one on Fun My Comic, because I already know what to expect with this. So uh, yeah. Without further ado, that's a score, 55 out of 100, disappointing, not to recommend. But uh, what's next? Where did I put those things? Oh, uh, here. The old Kaiji, Nakasawa. Appears you have to help me from the afterlife again. Roman Asai. I need your help. I need your help, Kaiji. And uh, yeah, Billy, one of my uh, childhood heroes. Yeah, this is a Belgian comic. I read you. I read you when I was when since I was a kid, and uh, I know this story. It's the cover. The cover might have uh, yeah, aged terribly, but I know the interiors are good. So I need your help with this one as well to get this out of my system. But before we're doing that, going back to uh, yeah. That part. Now we're going to part seven for what's happening next. This might look at like a great horned owl to you. This is a double spoiler, by the way. But uh, as you might notice, the color patterns are mo just more yellow in the feathers. So you, this is a Eurasian eagle owl, but uh, the Czechs call him Bubo Bubo. We call it the Uhu. It's one of the biggest owls in uh, on the European continent, and uh, yeah, this is also a spoiler for uh, one of my uh, for another indie creator and writer, because that's what will happen next next week. And this is what we call flute. That I bought in Peru, but uh, fits uh, the occasion so. Uh, You can make two sounds with it. This one of them. But uh, what I was getting at, <laughs> what's happening? Ne what what the next review will be? Oh, I gave a little hint. This is the next one. But 
Because that's a, supposed to be the sound of a screech owl. And, uh... There you go. Now we're going back to the shameless e part. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can leave a like. Subscribe if you want to. I'm not going to use the flute that much because otherwise I'll have trouble with my neighbors. You can leave a like, subscribe if you want to, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to see me, maybe if you'd like to see what I'm creating with my hardworking friend, Jaguar Warrior Issue One, Death the Family, is now available on the JaguarWarrior.com and Global Comics as a vertical scrolling webcom, bilingual webcomic, and uh, on Global Comics you can basically pick the form of whatever you want. And uh, if you like what you see, grab yourself a digital edition that will be available, even if I ever decide to delete it. I will not delete it from Global Comics because it's a good uh, promotional tool. And uh, it's also available on Gumroad for 2 euros where you get the print ready PDF file and uh, the CBR file for just 2 euros. But if you want something more special, like things, hold things in your hand, we have the remedy. This is my uh, reader copy. But it's all, the physical edition is also available on uh, Gumroad for 8 euros. And here you get the 250 matte coated cover, G matte coated cover, some beautiful interiors. And uh, yeah, with uh, 135 gram matte coated uh, paper. And uh, yeah, this is, what you, this is what the cover looks like. Look at the interiors here. Beautiful. And for, it, for the magic shipping, it will be shipped in a uh, bubble wrap envelope, like here. And uh, for international shipping, I'm not going to take them out. You get this sturdy cardboard box, post box, postcard box, whatever, however you call it. And uh, yeah, for an extra line of defense. So uh, yeah, fortunately shipping is something I can't control. But I had, I don't, I had fun creating it with my hard working friend. And chapter 2 is on the way, so uh, yeah. Expect good things to come. That's all I have to say for this video. I'm going to uh, bed. Going to uh, set to work tomorrow. I have a course to follow. I have my uh, brush my teeth, etc. I'll have to uh, pack in, pack my bag again for the next con on Sunday. So uh, talk to you guys later. Ciao ciao. Matane, or in this case, matareshu. Let's go to Samadesh, though.